grace and peace fam i feel like this thing is way too close to my face how are you this is your girl here taish sherelle and i just want to say a wonderful morning to you a wonderful wonderful thursday this is a day you've never seen before so i hope you're going to make the most of it and make it a great one i want to talk to you really briefly before i pull out my driveway about something that was just in my spirit this morning and that is there is strength there is strength in um order there is strength when we line up yes there is strength in order so the other day i was uh glancing through the the uh kind of just the media and I noticed there was an article and people discussing Meghan Merkel, who, if you've been watching the royal red, uh, wedding, she's now uh, the Duchess over, I don't know if it's Sussex or the other place. Anyway, well, they were commenting on how she's wearing like these stockings now, the stockings, the flesh color stockings for her legs. And people are like, oh my gosh she comes from like america where it's like feminism and she can do what she wants and now she's like oh my gosh she has to dress a certain way and she's wearing these stock well guess what hmm megan merkel in america megan merkel in uh england okay let's let's kind of weigh out yes so megan merkel now there there's a certain order that comes with the majesty and the rule and and her place because of the influence that she has and the line that she has joined in under marriage so now she has to come into a uh, a certain level of submission but with that submission look at what she's gaining i think what she's gain what she's gaining far outweighs what she had before okay so when she's outside she's dressing a little bit more conservative that's wonderful. What's wrong with that? Uh, she's covering up those legs. I remember growing up in the apostolic face. And yes, when we were in church and my mom still, when she goes out any place, you have those uh, stockings covered up. But guess what? In this submission, in this line up, there's strength, there's power. Because now think about this. So I have, you know, my daughters and they're home from college. And when they're at college, you know, they're living their lives. And when they come home, they're just so sweet. And they line up to the rules of the house. And guess what? I shower them with so many different things. Why? Because they are now in mommy's home. And so mommy is protecting them. They're under my protection. And they're able to enjoy the benefits that comes in being under submission to the rules in my house. Does that take away their individuality? Absolutely not. But they don't have to worry about certain things because mommy's taking care of the mortgage and mommy's taking care of the electric bill and all of this stuff. I may ask them to do little chores or, or, or different things like that. But guess what? What they are gaining far outweighs the benefits. Going back and looking at my time growing up, and I thank God for the apostolic church. It kept me, you know, it kept me in order because God knows there would have the enemy knowing where I was going. He would have tried to like really consume me. So, yeah, we didn't wear makeup. You know, we didn't wear pants. We didn't wear jewelry. And I say to people, yes, that's doctrine. But guess what? That modesty that they taught me, it kept me in line. It prepared me for this time when God can use me. Even now, um, so I had been, uh, hmm, how to put it, I had been in a situation where I was, uh, God just kept me by myself for 17 years, 17 years. He kept me unto himself and that was protection for me. I was able to fall in line up with him and my focus was him. And so I didn't have to worry about anything because he covered me. He watched over me. He kept me from the dangers of myself. We're living in a society today where everybody wants to have their own ways. I say it all the time in the school. One of the students said to me, uh, Miss Jackson, you have a cell phone. And I said, yes, I'm the teacher. I'm the adult. I can have a cell phone here. You're the student. You do not. 
you know, and so everybody wants their own way. But when everyone is having their own way, there is total chaos. Think about an army. If everybody is the chief and there's nobody following instructions, guess what? There's going to be chaos and guess up. You going down, baby. You going down. That army is falling. In a church, if everybody is operating at the head and nobody's uh, doing the work, you going down, you going down. Same thing. If everybody is running around like chickens with no head, there's an issue. There needs to be order. In order, there is strength. God created this world in order. Okay? Yes. On the first day, he created one thing. On the second day, he created another thing. And I'm not getting into the weather one day was one uh, thousand, one million years. No, let's not go there. Okay? But the bottom uh, line is there was order. And in order order things were structured and he set the world in this order and when we step out of order things go amok what do we see going around come on you don't need to be a rocket science to know that for me and my home i love to have things placed in order I, it drives me crazy like in my living room if i come and things are just placed things it just throws me out of order it makes me edgy i need to see things in order i know this is over here i know that is over there and i can be productive so now i want you to keep that in mind i remember hearing uh someone say years ago Anything that's operating with like three or four heads or one shoulders, okay, it's a freak. Okay, something is not right. So if we have three heads trying to run something or one small little body, something is out of order. Okay, and those of you, I'm not talking about people who are born with deformity. Let's get it. I'm not talking about that. Don't go there. I love that field because um, that's a place that I was chosen to work with people with special uh, needs. So let's not take that out of context. But so I'm talking about if anyone has a head and they're trying to do all those different things, there's going to be chaos. OK, so same thing in the natural, same thing in the spiritual. I want to encourage you today. Seek God's order. He has a way for us. He has a way for your life. And I'm telling you, when you line up, things are going to become simplistic. You're not going to have to worry about things. I'm, I'm thinking about, and I was having this long conversation with my daughters. We were out eating the other days. They're back in the country. It's really interesting because they're jet lagged. So, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to meet at the same times because they're sleeping when I'm awake and vice versa. But the, but the thing is, we were talking about how chaotic things is. We were talking about how, uh, now, Babies are, they're not being born the way they were before. Things are happening so differently in the family. Some people are just having them in the little incubator because of the way our uh, homes are structured and all of this stuff. The order is changing. And guess what? We as mankind are changing order from what the original designer has set it up and therefore expect that things are not going to go the way that you want it to go. I mean, hey, have it your way. Have it your way. You can do what you want to do. You have a choice. God has given everybody a free will and a choice. You can do what you want to do. But I want to let you know that in your choice, when you step out of the order, there's going to be some consequences. There's going to be some things. It may happen today. It may happen tomorrow. It may happen later. But you need to understand that. When I was younger and I was in my 20s, I remember saying, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And guess what? I knew. I knew that there were going to be consequences. And I really tried to educate myself and weigh out those con consequences and see if it was something that I wanted to deal with. Um, but that's a hard thing. We can't always do that. There's some things that we can't see. But I just want to encourage you that God's way is the best way. And uh, he loves you. He has a great plans for you. So you can do it like this or you can do it like that. You can do it like this. You can do it like that. You can do it like this or you can do it like that. But I think you want to do it like that because that's where it's at. He has a perfect way for you. He loves you. He loves you. And he does want the best for you. I mean, guess what? It's your life. Yeah. But he gave it to you. He designed you for a purpose. And uh, when you find yourself in him and you find yourself in the purpose that it was made for, I mean, think of like uh, utensils that you have at home. You can use it for something and you can kind of make it work. But when you use it in the manner that the person created it for, it's such ease. And then there's this fruit. 
it can do so much more. So if you really want to find out who you are, and I know you're great, and I know you're going to do wonderful things, but you need to go back to the person who's created you. I love you. Time for me to get to work. Bye.